Hey everyone, I'm Clai, and today I'm going to talk to you about the differences between food security and food sovereignty because these two terms are used so much in a lot of food justice conversations and I just thought that we should sit down, take the time, and unpack all of these definitions so we can better understand each other and our visions for a better food system. So keep on watching and make sure to visit kingcd.org to learn more about community agriculture in King County. Before we dive into food security and food sovereignty, I'd like to address the problem. And the problem is hunger. Hunger is an age old problem. I mean, we are living in 2020. We have these fancy cars and fancy phones and yet hunger still exists. And there's a reason for that because hunger is not the real problem. It is a symptom of a much larger problem and that is the overproduction of food, the unequal access to food. Our food system is very complicated. So it's very important to address that hunger is not the real problem here. Moving forward, we are also living in a pandemic. Feeding America predicts that in 2020, due to the effects of COVID-19, 54 million people will face hunger in America. That is about 16% of the US population. And so this is a very important time to reevaluate how we distribute our food in an equitable and just way. All right, let's talk about food security. Food security exists when all people at all times have physical and economic access to sufficient, safe, and nutritious food to meet their dietary needs and food preferences for an active and healthy life. Okay, sounds kind of complicated, so let's go to the grocery store and break this definition down. Here are the four dimensions of food security. All right, we got availability, access, utilization, and stability. Availability is simply the amount of grocery stores near you and how much a grocery store has in stock at any given time. Access is all about how far is the nearest grocery store? Do I need a car to get there? Is there public transportation? Do I have access to culturally relevant food? There's something that doesn't get mentioned that often, and that is the utilization or preparation of food. Some folks might not have a full kitchen to cook in, and so they may defer to canned goods or microwavable options. You can have full access to food and still suffer from malnutrition. If you are food secure, that means that you are able to prepare food in clean water and basic sanitation, as well as having the infrastructure to make nutritious food. Stability is the long-term ability to meet food requirements. In other words, you are food secure if you're able to not worry about the next grocery trip. This definition of food security has been widely accepted since the 70s and is the basis for a lot of the food assistance programs that we know today. SNAP, WIC, Fresh Bucks in Seattle are just a few examples. These programs have done a lot of good over the years. However, at the same time, a growing opposition was taking place. In 1996, La Villa Campesina, an international peasant farmer organization, argued at the World Food Summit that food security alone is not enough to solve world hunger. This is where La Villa Campesina launched its vision of food sovereignty. Food sovereignty is the people's, countries, or state union's right to define their agricultural and food policy without any dumping vis-a-vis -vis third countries. Let's go a little deeper and explore the six pillars of food sovereignty. Food sovereignty focuses on food for people. Food is a right, not a privilege. And instead of seeing food as a commodity to be traded, food is seen as sustenance first. Agricultural business has historically exploited black and brown lives, and that history still exists today. Food sovereignty asserts food providers' right to live and work in dignity. Local food systems take precedence over supplying large markets. Exports of agriculture are rejected. 
This means that trading is done locally and with the least amount of impact on the environment. And because everything is localized, so is the power. Food sovereignty puts control locally where the people who are most affected by the food system have the most power and say. Today, many of the cultural knowledge of food and farming has been forgotten or rejected. Food sovereignty builds knowledge and skills that are culturally relevant to the community. And lastly, food sovereignty works with nature. Protecting the environment and its natural resources is a requirement for a complete, just food system. At the heart of it, it is giving power back to the people and the community to self-determine their own food system instead of having a corporation or the government to determine that. One thing that La Via Campesina emphasizes is that food sovereignty is not a one-size-fits-all solution. It depends on the people, the space, and how they want to move in that space. So it's not, here's food sovereignty, magically you have a, a system that works for everyone. It's, it's very different for every case. So, which is better? Food sovereignty sounds great in theory, but it is much harder to implement. It takes a lot of time to organize and get community buy-in. Food security, on the other hand, doesn't consider the people and the environment as part of the food supply chain, which may be causing more harm than intended. One is a political stance, and one is more of a technical idea. Both concepts agree that hunger is something we must address. I believe, if done right, these two concepts don't have to be in conflict with each other. One thing I do know is that we have to educate ourselves. Where does my food come from? Who is growing my food? From there, we can start dreaming of better alternatives to our current food system. Okay, that was, that was a lot. Um, but thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon.